You know the drill by now, let's talk about some books. Hey guys, my name is Yasmina and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book haul for you. This book haul will be split into two parts. On Friday I will post the fantasy book haul and in this video it's everything that's not fantasy. So we have mysteries, literary fiction, paranormal, romance novels, contemporary novels, non-fiction, so everything else that isn't fantasy because I have quite a lot of books. These are all the books that I bought since my previous book haul which was somewhere around September of 2020 and so even though this is my first book haul of 2021. I have not purchased any of these books in 2021. So without further ado, let's get into all of the books that I got. I will start off with ebooks and audiobooks because yes, those count as books, guys, come on. But if you want to skip the section, you can just click on the chapter headings below. The first book I'm going to show you is really exciting because I actually read this book as it was being written a long time ago. I was a critique partner for this book and it's finally being published. So this is really, really exciting. I cannot wait to read the final version. And that is Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. So yeah, I was a critique partner for Sarah Das a few years ago. Um, and from what I know, the book changed completely from the version that I read. This is a persuasion retelling set in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Check it out if you're interested. Then we have a cozy mystery. I will show you some more cozy mystery novels in a second, but the ebook that I purchased was Chocolate Chip Murder. So I looked up some popular cozy mysteries because I really want to get more into the genre because from the ones that I have read, I have read some Agatha Christie. I really like those. So I wanted to read more and I just found some popular ones and this was one of them and it was cheaper to buy it on Kindle. Anyway, no idea what it's about, but a lot of people have said good things. So I'm intrigued. And then we have two audiobooks by the same author, Bill Bryson, that is Neither Here Nor There and The Lost Continent. Now, I have been reading this author's books for quite some time now, and these are just two more that I'm interested in. He has so many, um, but these are travel log books as far as I'm aware. And if they're anything as funny and insightful as his other books, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy them. First up, we have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Now, I've already read this book. You can find out more in my October reading vlog because I read this along with a lot of other horror scary books. And I will put that video up in the cards and down in the description if you're interested to hear more. But yes, this is a paranormal horror summer flick. It's a YA novel and I loved it. I gave this four out of five stars if I remember correctly. Anyway, it was great. This is about two best friends and we follow their friendship from the very beginning to the end of their lives. And when these two friends are teenagers, one of them gets possessed and it's up to the other one to save her friend. This also takes place in the 80s and we get a lot of sort of pop culture references. All of the chapter titles are song titles from the 80s. It was a lot of fun, would totally recommend this. So like I said, I bought some cozy mysteries. And so the other two cozy mysteries are first one is Bookmarked for Death by Lorna Barrett. And I know nothing about this except that it's set in a bookshop and there's a cat on the cover. Isn't that cool? I think this looks really cheesy, but really, really fun. So yeah, it's a cozy mystery. I assume there is a murder or something around this small town with a bookshop. Um, maybe the cat is in on it. Who knows? I'll find out. The other one is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. Now, this is one that I saw the most of whenever I searched for cozy mysteries. This popped up everywhere, so uh, I know it's really popular and I hope that also means it's good. The back of this says, or a blurb of this says, a cross between Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle and the Adams Family. That sounds pretty good to me. Then we have two contemporary novels around the same subject, and that is one of my favorite things, K-pop. They started coming out with a lot of sort of K-pop inspired books and I'm all for it. The first one is called K-pop Confidential by Stephen Lee. And as far as I know, this follows a girl group. Yeah, so it's about a Korean American teen who really wants to become a K-pop star and she auditions and travels to Seoul. She has to fight for a spot in the most hyped up K-pop girl group of all time. I love K-pop. Uh, I know there's some issues with the industry, of course, <laughs> since I've been following it for a long time, but I just think this topic is really fun. I'm really interested to see these authors' takes on the topic. So this is the first one. And the next one is called Shine by Jessica Jung. And this is even more exciting because Jessica Jung is actually a member of one of the biggest K-pop girl groups of all time, Girls' Generation. And she wrote a book about being a K-pop star. 
which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I'm not sure if she actually wrote it or if it was ghostwritten. I'm not sure it actually says. So I will assume it is her that actually wrote it and I am really interested in this one because of course her being a part of one of the most famous K-pop girl groups of all time, I'm sure she has a lot of insight, um, but it is a fiction novel. As far as I know, it's not a non-fiction. So yes, I'm very excited about both of these and I'm probably going to do a review video of these two together after I've read them. Next up is another genre I've been meaning to get more into or into to be honest because I haven't really read anything like this but I really want to give it a go and that is historical romance novels and I have three mass market paperbacks right here and I don't know about you but there's something really satisfying and cute that I find about these small mass market paperback editions and a lot of these covers are super cheesy but again kind of fun in a way. Um, the first one is a really popular one right now and that is Bridgerton's The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. So the series is called Bridgerton and I'm sure you've heard of it because it has recently been adapted into a Netflix show that everyone has been talking about. I haven't read it yet but I'm meaning to read this soon and then watch the first season of the Netflix show because I just want to get in on all of the hype and see if it's something for me. But yeah, it's a historical romance. Uh, I'm not sure what more there is to say about it. The next one is also about a duke and that is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. This again is one of the most popular ones when I've done, when I did my research on historical romance novels. This one popped up a lot. Again, historical romance, I assume main character falls in love with a duke and there's some mischief going on there. And then the final one is called Devil in Spring by Lis Lisa Claypass. And this is the third book in the Ravenels series. Now, this is the third book, but I think they're all sort of standalone companion novels. And so it doesn't really matter what order you read them in. I think they all follow sort of different characters from the same family. But uh, for some reason, this particular one piqued my interest more than the others. So I'm gonna start with this one. But yeah, again, I'm really excited to get a taste for this genre and once again I'll probably make an entire sort of video reading vlog of reading these three books and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So I hope you're excited about that because I am. I am ready to be swoony over these books. Then we have two literary fiction novels and I always try to read more of this genre because it really interests me but a lot of the times I don't really know what these books are about because they're very vague in their description and I found that I like them to be vague because I like to just go in not knowing anything and then be surprised. <laughs> the first one is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna and this is a really really popular novel. Um, I think it's one of the most highly rated books that I have on my TBR actually. It's been read a lot and loved by a lot of people and so I'm expecting great things. I think this is a World War II story. Yeah, so this is about two sisters that have been torn apart by the war and I guess we follow both of their perspectives. Like I said, I want to be surprised. And then the second literary fiction novel I have is Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is again one that I've seen everywhere. I think last year it was absolutely everywhere. <laughs> the million copy bestseller. Yeah, this book was huge. It's also quite a short book, so I think I can get through this really quickly. Yeah, so I think this is about two people who meet for the first time and we basically follow their relationship or their friendship being established through dialogue. I think it's mostly dialogue or... Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, now that I look at this, I remember something because this has no dialogue tags. It's just a conversation between the two, but there's no dialogue symbols or anything. So the formatting of this is a little bit weird. I'm curious to see if that's gonna bother me or not, but since so many people love this, I'm really curious to see if I will as well. Then I have a writing craft book that I've been meaning to buy for a very long time, and that is Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Broody. And so I have the first edition of Save the Cat, uh, which I'll put a picture of right here. I love that book and I've been talking about it for a long time. It's the book that introduced me to the concept of the 15 beat sheet and I use that method to this day to plot my books. Um, but that was mostly focused on screenwriting. You could use that formula to write novels as well. But I think Jessica Broody 
takes that formula and applies it to novels, but then maybe gives some more insight into how it can be used for novel writing specifically. So I'm curious if I will get anything new out of this version. I have a video on how to use the 15b2 method if you're interested, if you're a writer and you're interested in to see how that can be applied. I'll link that video up here and down in the description. And finally, the last book I want to talk about in this video is a little bit different because this is a non-fiction book about art and painting specifically and this is painting the painting masterclass by Thames and Hudson creative techniques of a hundred great artists and I first saw this book when I went to the Aos Museum here in Aarhus um, and then I ordered it online afterwards because I just remembered it and I really wanted to get it and see what it's about it basically follows the history of traditional art painting through the eyes of a hundred different great artists and their works. So it basically covers most of the great artists as well as a lot of you know artists I haven't heard of before. And we get a lot of techniques into how they created some of their paintings. So for example, this is a painting by Fernand Leger and it basically goes over the techniques that the artists used and how it can be applied um, to others wanting to replicate that style. It's not just about replicating the style, but it's about, you know, getting an insight into how some great artists have developed some of their works. And yeah, I'm hoping to learn something from this. I've already started flipping through it and reading some of the pages in it. Um, and I'm looking forward to learning more about painting. Those are all the books that I have for you guys for this video. Like I said, on Friday, I will be putting up my fantasy part of the book haul. So that'll be all of the fantasy books because as usual I have more fantasy than anything else. But still I hope you enjoyed this video and as always I will have links to all of the books in this video down in the description so if you're interested in picking any of them up you can do so. Uh, let me know what are some new books that you've recently purchased and that you're excited to read and otherwise I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!